Now let's talk about something very serious. Now December 1st marked World AIDS Day and as a result the Ghana AIDS Commission came out with some statistics as to the number of people who are living with the virus in the country, the new infections as well as the number of people living with the virus that are not on antiretroviral drugs and that's about 170,000 people and that's very disturbing. So before I introduce you to our doctor from the Ghana AIDS Commission, let's head over and find out what the statistics are actually saying. And so here we go. Now it says that the estimated number of people living with HIV currently is 334,713. Now the males make up 35% of the infected persons with 117,000 199. Now, females make 65% of the total number of people infected, and that's 217,514. When it comes to adults and children, adults represent 91%, and that's from 51, uh, 15 years and upwards. And we have 305,199 adults living with the virus. And children between 0 and 14 years uh, represent the rest. Now, let's move on to the new HIV infections as of 2018. And it says that we have currently 19,931 people who were infected in 2018. And the adults from 15 years um, above represented 83%. That's 16,614 people. And the children 0 to 14 years, 3,317, representing 17%. And out of that, when it comes to the youth, 15 to 24 uh, years, we had 5,532 people infected, representing 28%. And males, 22%. Uh, that's 1,175. And females, 4,382. And that's 78.9%. That's whooping. Um, okay, so the estimated number of annual AIDS-related deaths, total number of annual AIDS related deaths as of 2018 still and we have 14,181 people AIDS related deaths amongst adults 15 years and above 11,412 that's 80 percent of such people and 20 percent of these people uh, are children between 0 to 14 years and that's 2,700 and 69. And so joining me in the studios right now, Dr. Fred Nanapoku is the Director of Technical Services, Ghana AIDS Commission. Good morning and thank you for joining us. Good morning. These are very startling statistics and I'm worried, especially because the numbers seem to be increasing all the time. Why is that so? Because many years ago when I was younger, Every time you turned on the TV, when you listened to the radio, we had one HIV song or one documentary. I remember there were people who moved from the States to come and record a documentary about it. We'll see a man who's been infected for many years, lying in bed and all of that. They were scary, but for me, it was etched in my memory forever to take care of myself and not get infected. I don't see any of that in our media spaces anymore. Is that why we have uh, you know, more people getting infected? Partly. Partly, partly, yes. Partly, I want to agree with you. Okay. Um, sometimes when the scare is over, in mm, quotes, mm. people tend to take risky behaviors. Yeah. Um, gone are the days, as you rightly said, when we see on our screens, cachetic people, people who are lean, yeah. who are dying of yeah. AIDS, mm -hmm. thanks to the advent and the presence of antiretroviral therapy, which yeah. is doing marvelously well among people who get infected. Okay. Uh, the antiretroviral therapy boosts their immune system. It decreases the replication of the virus mm -hmm. within the body, make them more healthier, give them more neurological strength okay. and all that. So it's making uh, AIDS become a chronic condition yeah. like any other conditions like uh, hypertension, mm -hmm. diabetes mm -hmm. and all that. And because of that, uh, sometimes it's like we are we are we are victims of our own successes. Yeah. Uh, the scare is 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 gone down. It's gone down completely. And 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 I remember I was talking to one young lady, and she said, "Look, my friend, you work with AIDS Commission. Mm -hmm. HIV is not trending. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not something that is of interest to us. Exactly. Uh, so what are you doing over there? Mm. So 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 that is the situation we find ourselves in, and it's, it's contributes partly to the new infections that we're having. Okay. Adding to that is our financial challenges as well. I, I don't really like talking about financial challenges because mm -hmm. everybody uh, sings that tune, like, oh, we don't have money to yeah. do this and yeah. that and that. So we're having a decreased campaign mm -hmm. uh, in our media uh, in recent past. Yeah. But, but of late, I mean, like, moving forward, looking at this startling statistics that is, is shivering yeah. to everybody, 
we think we have to change our strategy. We okay. have to intensify our efforts we do. to ensure that we reach the uh, 2020 targets that mm -hmm. globally we have all ascribed to. Okay. So we, we are looking at that. Is there stigma still for HIV? Because I, I remember we also had some HIV ambassadors. Quite recently, there was one person who made a U-turn, quite confused about her, status you know, her status and all, and all of that. But right. even regardless of that, we still have people who would go out there. We still have the Reverend and his Mrs. Azuma, Azuma yeah. Yeah, who were all over the place telling people how they got infected, how they found out and all of that. And I think that also drummed home the message that it is real and maybe people should protect themselves as well. If you're saying there are no funds, there are people who have been infected. And I'm sure that if, uh, based on how they feel, they'd want to come out there and tell people their story. That's another form of education. Why are we not taking advantage of that? We are. We are. Actually, uh, I must say, mm -hmm. if, if you watched us uh, on 1st December, yeah. Yeah. we actually presented some, some prizes or yeah. awards to the Heart to Heart Ambassadors because we, we believe that they're doing marvelously well and we need to encourage people to come out, uh, openly declare their HIV status. But how can they come out if there's still stigma? Yes, and it is part of the destigmatizing uh, 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 campaign mm -hmm. that goes on. Okay. Uh, so we, we have to intensify, and we are intensifying that campaign. Okay. Um, um, we, we, we know from studies that we conducted in country, we did some stigma index studies, mm -hmm. which shows that stigma is rife in the health facilities themselves. Oh, Where we, we, we're supposed to see less stigmatizing mm -hmm. attitude, mm -hmm. we are seeing that. So we have USAID helping us with uh, the equip project, which is trying to deal with stigma in health yeah. facilities. Yeah. So we appreciate that enormous. But it is, you know, sometimes when we talk about stigma, we think it's somebody somewhere who does yeah. it. It is we ourselves. Mm. So we have to take ownership All right. All right. and don't stigmatize. And sometimes it is also based on the fact that we don't understand the dynamics of the disease okay. and the, the disease progression and how it even comes about. Yeah. Which is important because we need as to you know have that just as well. shown with the statistics, mm -hmm. three thousand three hundred and seventeen children zero to fourteen yeah. got infected in twenty eighteen, mm -hmm. and this was almost totally true mother to child transmission. Mm -hmm. Three thousand three hundred and seventeen yeah. mother to child. These children had never engaged in any sexual act. Yeah. Now, if these children do not receive antiretrovirus, are not identified, and indeed some of them, the mothers do not send the babies back to the facility to be identified. Okay. They grow up, they are 18 years, they are 17, they get to the university, they get to know, they go get tested, and they find yeah, out to be positive. Yeah. And somebody somewhere sits somewhere and stigmatize and say, especially if they, they are a little more fashionable mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and they, 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 they are adapting foreign uh, lifestyles Lifestyle. and uh, clothing. And then we say, hey, yeah. this is, a, in quote, a prostitute, a yeah. sex worker. Mm -hmm. We stigmatize and they are not able to even go and pick up their medications yeah. because their own friends, we'll lecturers, whoever, mm -hmm. will stigmatize them. Yeah. This is not acceptable. Okay. And, it's not acceptable. And, and what are we doing about it? Because whether we like it or not, it is prevalent in our society that people who are still looking down on people with infections anyway. Yes. So we, we are encouraging everybody. Mm. We are doing the campaigns. Yeah. We started some campaign. We are going to continue. We have a, what we call prevention coalition mm -hmm. campaign, mm -hmm. which is a globally accepted uh, campaign that we will be yeah. rolling out. We are doing the free to shine campaign against mothers who do not send their babies back yeah. and their babies are dying of AIDS. Mm. The statistics mm. are showing. They're showing, yes. Uh, Even on social media, right. uh, I was going to say, there are some nurses, I mean, ethically, that's wrong. But they would come and say, so a patient came around and we tested. They won't give the details of the patient. But at least they'll say, so today we tested a patient and realized they are HIV positive and blah, blah, blah. There should be some sanctions meted out to such people, especially in the health facility, because you're saying that even there, where they should be more careful, they are the ones who stigmatize the most. Yes. You know, and people talk about HIV on social media and everybody acts very funny and, you know. <laughs> so it is there. And I hope that we can do a lot about it. We can. Together we can. Mm. And, and about this sanction thing you're talking about, yeah. in our act, Act 938, okay. GAC Act, 
which was passed in 2016. Mm -hmm. It is an offense to mm. discriminate. We hear of people being sacked from their rented homes yeah. because they are HIV, HIV positive, mm -hmm. some being dismissed from work mm -hmm. and all that. It is an offense. It is spelled out in the act. Mm -hmm. Sections are there. I think section 29 to 33, that talks about sanctions and discrimination against HIV. Is it only against infected? health workers or everybody? Everybody, okay. irrespective of where, which caliber of society you are. So if I discriminate against an HIV AIDS patient, what happens to me? If the person is bold enough. The, the point is we, we do not test laws in this country. Mm -hmm. There mm -hmm. are several provisions that we have, but people do not. Even when somebody is genuinely discriminated against. Yeah. He just thinks about it and says, oh, this one is going to take a long process. Mm -hmm. I don't have the funds to, to go through. To follow through, the, yeah. yeah. And so people don't, mm -hmm. but the laws are there. Yeah. Okay. Since it was passed, I just remember there was one lady who came uh, from, I think, uh, Upper East, mm -hmm. came all the way, came to complain. And we refer you to the appropriate Cortes. Has anybody been jailed? Has anybody been fined? I don't. For I don't. I don't remember against? jailing, but okay. I know that there are people who have been given redress, okay. which seems different forms, mm. reversal of some decisions yeah. that were taken uh, against those okay. people and all that. Yes. There are more women infected with HIV/AIDS. We have sixty-five percent of the total number of people being women. Yeah. Why is that the case? Why is it so easy for women to get infected as compared to men? Right. Uh, in the first place, uh, there, there is a uh, the. An anatomical concentrations. Okay. They have a wider surface area. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, I don't want to be too scientific, the, but yeah. diffusion, when you have a wider surface area for things to diffuse, it's easier for it to diffuse. Mm. So they are, they are, the lining of the vagina, when it's spread out, you know, it's, it's yeah. rugged, mm -hmm. it becomes a very large space, mm. right? And then the men deposit the sperms, yeah. or the, the, the semen, mm -hmm. which contains especially the person is infected, a lot of viruses. In the right? semen? Yes. Okay. There's right. a lot of viruses in, in, in there. Mm. So with this large area, the possibility of transfer is increased. Mm -hmm. Number two, there's also trauma. During mm -hmm. sexual intercourse, most of the time, there are some bruises that sometimes you can't see with your normal Naked eyes. eyes. Yeah. They are minute bruises, mm -hmm. but that makes transmission easier okay so these are considerations that uh, are there mm -hmm. thirdly women are not able to negotiate for safer sex okay because of our cultural dispositions and yeah. our cultural factors yeah. right mm -hmm. a woman can't i mean having sex she wants to use condom it's the dictates of men yeah because of our cultural beliefs and our cultural practices mm -hmm. all this together make the woman more prone to, to, to I believe it when it comes Unemployment to, yeah. and all... And our lifestyles, going yes. to the saloon, fixing your Fixing nails, your nails. So you get a sometimes cut. Yeah. we don't use sterilized uh, mm. instruments and all that. Mm -hmm. yes. So that, that also contributes to... What to about the youth? Vulnerable. Because then they are more vulnerable, if you ask me. They're exploring, they're excited about growing <laughs> up, you know, and all of that. And so it's easy for them to make some mistakes and get right. infected. Right, Yeah. Even yesterday I was talking to... Some use, and mm -hmm. it's like, well, condoms is not our pain. Mm -hmm. That's what they say. That's what they say. Mm. Condoms is not our pain. Yeah. Because the thing that the the the, the, the level of excitement or mm -hmm. enjoyment becomes minimal Limited, or, yeah. or, or it yeah. reduces mm -hmm. with the use of condom. But it, come to think of it, with that little reduction, as yeah. compared to a lifetime infection, where you always have to go for medication mm. at a tender age till whatever it's not too interesting yeah so sometimes it's good to weigh the two odds okay. and then decide on a, a little balance i'm like when it comes to the youth especially what right. do you teach do you preach abstinence do you preach safer sex is abc certainly exactly so what do you preach especially for the youth we teach abc Still ABC, but yes. then there's one that would still because, be drummed but on you see, more. Yes, we teach ABC. Okay. But I always t tell somebody, if if you have somebody who doesn't want A, mm -hmm. whatever he does, he will still not. He still not. Yeah. Will you take the risk of allowing that person 
to go scores free and mm -hmm. say that you want to teach A. Yeah. And again, who 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 passes? Uh, not everybody has this uh, moral 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 yeah. Or whatever. Yeah. So it, it, we have diverse society. It is a diverse society, mm -hmm. diverse group of people, diverse communities. Yeah. So uh, the options are there. Medically, uh, condom yeah. is quite good and safe. It is. Because it, it, it prevents at least up to about 95, 98% when it's used consistently and correctly. Oh, great. You will, yes, you will not get infected. As simple as the use of condoms. Mm. Well, they, they preach more about teenage pregnancy and they sort of forget yes. you so know, the, STDs that, the STDs and all of that. Yeah. Because, because, you see, that's the point. Because teenage preg pregnancy becomes obvious to yeah. everybody yeah. when you get pregnant. Mm. So that is where the scare is. Yeah. And then you are also bringing in another person. But the dynamics of HIV is such that when you get infection, you might not even feel anything sure. for a long period of time, mm -hmm. 15 years, 10 years. You 12 still years know that you're infected. so you you don't really kind of give a damn exactly but but that is that is not Let, really let's talk about that. the drugs now and why people are refusing to use the drugs if that's the the, the case uh because i know that un aids introduced or initiated the 1990 target tell right. me about that and why ghana is unlikely to reach that target in 2020. right thank you very much the 1990 came about with the realization that we are not able to achieve our target mm -hmm. of eliminating AIDS if no drastic measure is taken. taken. Is this a worldwide initiative? Worldwide initiative okay. by the UNAIDS. Mm. And it stands to me, first of all, people who know their status should actually know. Mm -hmm. Because the disease is not obvious, you don't have signs and symptoms that is glaring. Yeah. There was a need for people who have contracted or being infected with the virus to actually know. Mm. So we want to ensure that 90% of all those who know their status mm -hmm. or who are infected should know their status. Okay. At that time, globally, it was about, about one out of two did not know their status. Mm. And it also applied to Ghana. Mm -hmm. So the first 90 means that we want to ensure that 90, it's not that 90% of the population should be tested. Yeah. That is not the issue. Okay. But 90% of those who are infected should know their status. Their status. The second 90 implies that 90% of those who are positive, who have known their status, mm -hmm. should be placed on effective antiretroviral therapy. Okay. Because the drugs are available uh -huh. and they are highly effective. Mm. And the third 90 means that the drugs that you are taking should actually work okay and working for you will mean that you have viral suppression what we call viral suppression mm -hmm. the viruses are suppressed within your system all right so we're saying that 90 percent of those on treatment should have viral suppression. are there actually cases where the the drug does not work on some infected patient yes um, um it depends Depending upon, because there, there are a myriad of yeah. drugs. Yeah. Oh, so, okay. So it's not the, just one particular drug. It's not one drug. particular. Even what each person takes is a combination of three drugs. It's like malaria treatment. Okay. Initially, we started with a single uh, dose. dose of uh, of, of uh, chloroquine. Yeah. And yeah. those things. But now, now we are using we... combination. Yeah. Atemita-based mm. combinations. Currently, the antiretrovirals is also a three combined uh, medication okay and it, the the drugs target specific processes or areas involved in the viral replication okay why are people refusing to take the drug what's the problem first as i said some people do not even know mm. their status in okay. ghana as at the end of 2018 we were about 51 percent out mm. of the 90 percent that we we we, we, we were okay we emphasize. Right, so some people that do not know, and those that know their status, one of the reasons is they don't want to even accept the that fact they that have been they infected. have been infected hmm. because there are no signs. If you if you get a cold, yeah, it shows. I mean, it shows. Then, obvious, then, yeah. So you say, oh, child, I'm feeling so bad. Mm -hmm. I need to take medication mm -hmm. and all that. But if you get a viral infection from HIV, nothing shows. So sometimes, and you know, there is no guarantee that. You should have multiple sex before you get yeah. the virus. Yeah. Because single sexual act with somebody who is infected can lead you to get infected. Mm -hmm. A thousand rounds of sex with somebody 
who is infected could not probably even cause you to get infection. Oh. There is a possibility. Okay. Because we also have what we call discordant couples, mm. where one is positive, the other is that negative, is and yet still they are living and having sex, and they have not transmitted to I their see. opposite partner. So, some people find it hard to believe that they are infected, mm -hmm. not understanding that they could have gotten it even from their mothers, yeah. their mothers who might have passed out, mm. or from a one-time single act with a boyfriend, mm -hmm. or casual sex, mm -hmm. because we're finding out that casual he heterosexual uh, consensus and sexual activity has increased the uh, chances of getting the infection. The Number two, stigma. Yeah. Don't want anybody to know they have it. So why should I go and take the medications? Shouldn't there be a discreet way of getting the drugs? We are trying. Okay. We we try to to find out outlets, non-traditional outlets. Okay. At the, uh, at, uh, at, we know that with stable clients, some of them are able to pick the drugs, mm -hmm. and all that. We have uh, practitioners who are able to do that. So okay. it's all an ongoing process to improve. Mm the system and ensure that every single person who is infected is placed on antiretroviral. Because right. even taking the drug itself is a preventive measure. Apart from helping the individual, when the viruses mm -hmm. <laughs> are suppressed and become undetectable yeah. in the blood system, they are untransmissible. Ah, okay. So treatment is also prevention. All right. So it's one of the prevention modalities that we, we, are, we are preaching and we're talking about. All right. Well, yes, and I hope that we can continue with this conversation and we can preach even more. And I hope that government jumps on board and provides some funding, um, you know, for the Ghana AIDS Commission. I'm sure you've already started that negotiation conversation. Certainly. I mean, right. in, in the 2020 budget, some provisions have been made. Have been made. We're okay. trying to establish an HIV and AIDS fund. Mm. The process has gone far. Uh, okay. The legislative instruments. Uh, it's, it's almost completed. Awesome. We met with a uh, parliamentary committee on legislation and one on health and a couple of okay. individuals. So I'm sure that they, we, we will get, we I get hope a breakthrough. So. We will get a breakthrough. I hope so. Plan Angelinda says that some Ghanaians make mockery of people living with HIV and it makes it difficult for them to come forward. And aside that people with AIDS should eliminate, eliminate the mindset of spread, spreading the disease because someone unknowingly and painfully transmitted it to them. I think as a country, we're not doing well in terms of educating the public on this particular issue. It all starts from education. All right. So I think that should be about it. And I hope that we can increase the momentum in terms of educating the public on, you know, some of the issues concerning HIV AIDS. And so thank you so much for joining me. Thank Dr. You Fred Nanapoku is a director of technical services at the Ghana AIDS Commission. And so it's not too late to go test. Just find out. And, you know, it's better to find out now than to fall sick later.